Congratulations to every single one of you. Congratulations for your patient organising over the last few years. Building a branch from just a handful of activists to a powerful, formidable force now which is nudging 3,000 strong. Congratulations for that. Congratulations. <laughs> Congratulations for building this fantastic pay campaign. And congratulations for building the confidence of the workforce to a point where you have been able to deliver a fantastically successful strike. So those ones who are taking industrial action today, you are the heroes and heroines of our movement. Because the sacrifices you're making today are the sacrifices that will protect future generations of workers coming into this job. If we don't draw the line in the sand now, where do you think wages are going to go in the future? It'll be lower and more exploitative and it'll be a more bullying management as well. If they think they can get away with it, they'll continue to get away with it and they'll come forward with more. So what you're doing today, I think, is heroic. It's the right thing to do. And to be frank, it will force them back to the negotiating table. We've got to be confident about that. Willie Walsh is using you as some sort of sick contestants in his version of the Hunger Games. <laughs> that you, you have a year, you have a year and of, of being able to manage. And then after that, you're exhausted and you're on low pay. It all feeds back into the business plan. They want these people to join what's seen as a prestigious airline, a big British brand do the job and then after a year or two they realise physically they can't do it, financially they can't do it and they're out the door and they've got a new wave coming in. Maybe for extra publicity we've, we have to challenge Bear Grylls to come and try and survive in London on £12,000, <laughs> yeah. £3 an hour and do your work because it's ridiculous. There's no economic argument for the company to provoke this dispute. They have the profits and they're more interested in either paying their chief exec the millions that he now has, or their shareholders rather than the workers themselves. <laughs> what we're showing today is three factors. Determination, you're absolutely determined we're going to win this. Courage, whatever it takes, whatever it takes. And above all else, solidarity. Solidarity with one another, reinforcing each other, campaigning together, yes, if necessary, taking industrial action together. Why? Because your cause is just solidarity. God knows what your children will be, the state of their working lives as they drive our economy down to the levels of India and China as a living wage. That's what they want. That's what global capital is all about. So it's time now to show us the fight. As a wise old trade union officer said to me one time, if your parents wanted something to roll over and have its belly tickled, they'd have got a dog, not a human being. <laughs> You're human beings. Let's get out there. Let's take this fight. Let's hit the picket lines. Get on the bus. Yeah. My dad joined the airline in 1976. He had a good career at British Airways, nice bringing up his children. I joined the airline in 1997, and again, it was a nice wage. I was able to buy my first house, bring up my two kids. I then left the airline for a couple of years just to have a break after the last dispute, actually. And uh, I came back onto Mixed Fleet in 2014. So, yeah, been, BA's been part of my life for. Yeah, best part of 40 years, I guess. The job itself hasn't changed. It's exactly the same as what Dad did in 1976, what I started doing in 97. So the job hasn't changed. 
the airline's changed as it's more profitable, it's gone out to more of a shareholder-led organisation. The A is making profits it's never ever made before. Now I'm earning less money than I was in 1997, literally less money. My, my wage slip from November 1997 when I first started flying was higher than my wage slip of January 2017. <laughs> difficult to live on £12,000 a year and even with the sustenance pay of £3 an hour it makes it difficult. People are starting to not eat their meals, um, like with nobody on mixed feet I know that has three meals a day that you're supposed to have nutritionally um, to keep yourself healthy. You don't get the right amount of sleep which obviously then affects you later as well so you eat the wrong food um, but also people can't afford to eat healthily, they can't afford to eat the, the, the things that you're supposed to eat to keep your body going so they start turning to, to fast foods and stuff because it's cheaper, especially when we're away in other, other countries. You're required to live within two hours of the airport. There was a there house was, share, a wasn't house there, with like three, four bedrooms and eight people living there and yeah. paying over £600 each. each. I think that's absolutely disgraceful and people can't afford to live like that, but they also can't afford to rent or buy a property on their own. So you you have no choice but to be put into that position and you work for a premium airline. They're working us on up to eight day weeks so they'll make us do short haul flights going straight into a night flight to say like Cape Town or Johannesburg um, and then you've worked previously you've been up at 6 a.m. most mornings and then you're going off and doing a night flight that that evening it's it's it's, it's really really hard on short haul duties you're getting up 5 a.m. even earlier sometimes to come home and people haven't had an opportunity to have a proper meal so you come in on a on a flight you land into Heathrow you have an hour to then go back onto the, another aircraft to go back to another destination and people haven't eaten sometimes for over 12 to 15 hours when you're at 36,000 feet we are there as the ambulance service, we are there as a the fire service, we are there as the police if we need be, and also the fantastic customer service which these guys do day in, day out. But that's, it's, it's almost like BA sort of like I've forgotten that. There's been um, a scientific study that says after 17 hours awake, it's the equivalent of having so much alcohol in your system, even though you wouldn't have touched a drop of alcohol. Um, it starts to have that effect and the more you're awake the more of an effect that has and we often will be awake on you know coming home from America where you're waking up in the American morning you're not able to sleep again that day you then do the night flight home if you're unable to sleep in the bunks or you don't have bunks for example I've been awake now for 40 hours straight with absolutely no, no rest no sleep whatsoever and that is not a safe situation to be in at all. 6B! No way! 6B! No way! 6B! No way! 6B! No way! Spencer sandwiches on board are selling for I think it's £4.50 so we'd have to work for one and a half hours to be able to afford a sandwich from, from the, uh, the company that we work for. That's not the only change to the project on board the aircraft that our customers are seeing it's one of many they're just cutting back everything they're making all these cost savings they're acting like a company who are making massive losses but they haven't made losses for a number of years now. They're making record-breaking profits. Obviously, and I just wanted to say that we are fighting inequality and unfairness at British Airways, and we are on strike today. So, if you come and support us, that would be amazing. Thank you.
I wanted to congratulate you for standing up for your rights. You know, the reality is in today's climate, bosses often think that they've got the upper hand and that they can constantly take from ordinary working people. It's an absolute disgrace what British Airways are trying to force on you. Uh, we knew right from the outset uh, British Airways' attitude to mixed fleet, which is why we set about trying to organise you. They told us years ago, we're not interested in cabin crew coming here and having long careers uh, and having decent pay. We basically want to employ young people. We want to burn them out, pay them as cheap as we possibly can. At the start, uh, as the fleet was very small, um, the company started enforcing this, um, this control uh, by first by union busting techniques, uh, slashing off um, uh, union reps from BASA, uh, which was the existing branch, and also spreading rumors about people not being able to join a union. People started talking to each other as crew do, and uh, especially with social media, we tried to organize and get more members with the support of Unite. We managed to get a recognition agreement, but um, while I was at the branch, uh, we never managed to get um, a facilities agreement. Obviously, this gave uh, the company uh, a lot of control. It was always a question of uh, we will de-roster you if we think it's appropriate. At the very start, there were people that were trying to implement a branch and they were pushed out. As I was in the end, I had anxiety um, uh, in, a, in a big deal due to, to, the, to the workload. I had um, as crew member and, um, and as a branch secretary. Six years on and people are now out striking. I've seen a guy this morning who I flew with only two, three weeks ago who was not in the union, had no intention of joining the union and no intention of striking. Today he's been sat in bed for striking, it's his second round of industrial action and that is the impact that the company are having on people. We've got so much support from other, other areas of VA, we've got so much support from other unions, but not just that, we're getting support from gold card members, people who actually spend millions of pounds with VA to fly with the flagship carrier and they are supporting us because they are aware of how unfair it is. I think that people are now just starting to realise that we're not on our own and solidarity is strength. People are becoming more and more confident to come out and show their face and actually stand up for what they believe in. Your union will be shoulder to shoulder with you. Uh, we've obviously increased our, our strike pay to assist you financially and I want to tell you now whatever resources you need uh, you'll get. My experience tells me that when working people stay solid with one another anything is possible and I'm confident that justice will prevail. Well done. <laughs> United will never be defeated. The crews united will never be defeated.